Hello, I shall now attempt to explain to you our magnificent and marvellous Lichtenauer Expansion Pack. So, the Lichtenauer Expansion Pack, the, the actions within it um, modify the blows you already have. So, by themselves, they don't do anything. Yeah? They have to always be played with a card from your character deck or your dual deck. So, here I have my basic hand from the patron deck and the basic hand from the Lickenau expansion pack. So you start out with a rather large hand of 17 cards. And at any point when you would draw a card from your action deck, you may choose to draw it from your standard dual deck, action deck, or from the Lickenau expansion pack, depending on what you want to do. Um, let's briefly cover the guards. As we saw in the video uh, regarding the uh, patron deck, um, the German guards are a little bit different to the Italian ones and because Lichtenauer emphasizes the four guards, Ox, Flug, Von Tag and Albert, in the expansion pack you only have those four guards but you have Ox right and left, Flug right and left, Von Tag and Albert. Okay, so if you want the full suite of all 12 um, German guards then you need to have the uh, Nicodemus deck because again we didn't want to pad out the expansion pack with too many extra things. Okay, it just makes playing too complicated. So let's go through the cards that are in the basic hand. Okay, Zucken. I failed to explain Zucken, which does appear in the patient deck. I failed to explain it in that video, so I'll, I'll go in over it now. If your opponent has most Prudentia, convert Stretto Bind Type to Largo and play an eligible cut. Okay, so as we saw with um, Mutiran, this is one of the cases where your opponent's virtues can actually act against them. So if your opponent has most Prudentia, you get to play this card. If, they, if you have most Prudentia, then you cannot play this card. Okay, and Zucken is Okay, in real life, the swords are bound, and I took it basically I snap the point back and chop down on the other side. Okay, that's how Zuken works in real life. So the blades meet, you're in the, the bind type and stretch off, so at that point this Zuken card allows you to play a cut when normally you would only be able to do a stretch of blade. And again, this is a general pattern within the Lichtenau material. There's lots of counterattacks and very little of the Zogostrato stuff where Fiore would have us use a Zogostrato technique um, entering in and doing some vicious nastiness and pommels and throws and things. Um, the Germans prefer to keep their distance and poke you and slash you and do stuff like that. So, there's Zorn. Sort of now, Zornhau Or. This is like the foundational technique of the entire Lichtenau system as I understand it. So, um, under normal circumstances, you can only counterattack when you have most celeritas. But Zornhau Ord allows you to counterattack when you have most prudentia, okay? which is a marvelous advantage. So, um, you may counterattack with any Fendente or Omahau strike. Right? Um, it follows the rules of counterattacking, though, so your opponent must also be attacking with a Fendente. Okay, Krumpau. Krumpau is one of those really interesting uh, German techniques where you basically you angulate in the blade. So instead of holding the sword straight way on, you're holding the sword pretty much this way, and you're angulating around the attack either to strike the hands or to beat the blade down and strike. Now, the version of Krumpau that we are using um, is effectively a parry and strike, but it there's a lot of detail here, and I wrote a blog post all about it, and it is actually all also explained in the printed out course. So I'm not going to go over and over it here. Um, suffice to say that what we are trying to model with the crumb power is everything that Lichtenau says about it. So, for example, he says it breaks left ox. So if your opponent is in left ox, where normally that line would be closed because their sword is over there, okay. Crump power allows you to smash through it and strike, so it allows you to attack against left ox with a right overhaul. Um, it allows you to effectively, uh, if you think about it, 
If the sword is coming in this way and I parry it and strike over here, I'm striking with a downwards blow from the left, so a left overhaul or a reversal fendente. The mechanics are different, but the line of the blow is the same. So basically, we model that by saying you can counterattack against a madrid fendente or right overhaul using a left overhaul or reversal fendente, which is something that is impossible in the normal version of the game. But the crump how bit is the bit where your sword smashes theirs out of the way, creating that opening. Okay, Zverikau. Zverikau is, Zverikau is lovely. It's kind of like the helicopter strike, and you have your sword, and you go bang, smack, bang. That's the guy's best Zverikau. Um, you may play a Mezzalo Mittelhau to counterattack any Fendente or Overhau strike. This is pretty much how the Zverikau works in real life. Because of the way you're holding the sword, you can close the line of the incoming fendente or overhaul, leaving your point free to make a uh, crosswise strike across their face or head. So, uh, again, we model that by allowing you to play a mezzano or middle howl against a fendente. The Vinden, um, I went over with the, when I was talking about the patron deck allows you to convert a stretch blind type to Largo and player thrust and you need most Prudentia for this. You will have noticed that in the basic hand you generally want most Prudentia except for Zucken. Okay? And this is where the your opponent has to have most Prudentia comes in because we're trying to balance out the way the virtues play out. Because otherwise if you had Celeritas and Prudentia and the Lichten Expansion Pack you're basically guaranteed to win. So we're, we are balancing the game by fiddling around with that, and I'm trusting our illustrious game designer, Samuel Rannanen, to make that call because he's jolly good at his job. Now, um, it continues with Mutirin and Duplirin. Mutirin allows you to convert the Stratoblind type to Largo and play a thrust, if you are stronger. Um, Duplirin, if your opponent is stronger, um, and we discussed that in the patron deck, um, you can convert the straight up line type to Largo and play an eligible cut. Ringen, now in the expansion pack you don't get the glorious over the shoulder throw thing, uh, you just get a gamba roller um, because you know the patron is the best and yes, thank you Terry, we appreciate it. Um, it allows you to convert any uh, eligible stretch or counter remedy into a perfect counter. Um, Uberlaufen, um, you can play this card with any Fenente Overhaul to counterattack against your opponent's Mezzana, Mittelhau, or Satana, Unterhau. So as, they, as their blade comes towards you, you can basically smash over the top of it. Okay. Very German. Überlaufen. <coughs> and I actually have a salve full of um, students visiting from Germany at the moment, and they are all quietly mocking my pronunciation of German terms. But that's okay. I shall not be mocking their pronunciation of the Italian terms, because that would be uninstructive. Anyway, to continue, Fulen. You may act first in a strato bind situation and orient the strato side card. Fulen is one of the fundamental principles of the Lichtenauer system, and it basically refers to the feeling um, of the blade. In later Italian sources, they talk about sentimental di ferro, but Fiore doesn't explicitly mention this anywhere. But it is explicitly discussed in the Lichtenauer sources, so here it is. Fulen, we love it. Notice this gives you a kind of light, savory laser sword. That is um, our glorious artist's wonderful um, idea of how to kind of express this, this um, ability to act first in the bind. Um, because basically, Fulan allows you to feel what the blade relationship is and act more quickly, therefore it gives you priority. Very useful card. Abscessen. Abscessen is, is basically a kind of counter-attack where um, somebody attacks and you basically just stab. It's a very German thing to do. And we model that by saying you may defend with thrust from any poster. Okay? Just as in um, Dente Shingaro in the standard dual decks, you can defend with thrust if you're faster. This allows you to do it from any guard. Obviously, you have to have a thrust in your hand. Indes. Indes is another fundamental German um, concept that is emphasized in the lifting out sources and it allows you to seize the four at any point in the game, play at any time. In other words, 
if you are playing with somebody and they, um, you know, it's their turn to play a card, if you have this card, you can, my turn now, and play whatever you want. Okay? So it is um, basically a way of making it your turn again when it should be their turn. Okay? And that's basically what Indes is, it means immediately. So um, when the blades meet, I act Indes. I don't wait around, I just I seize the vor. And the vor is the initiative, um, the, uh, basically the control of the fight by, by acting first, by seeing what's going on first. So this leaves us with the two last um, hidden strikes. Um, shield how. You need most audacity to play this, and having done shield how with swords, I would agree you need to be pretty brave. Um, and your opponent has most 42, though, because shield how is explicitly done against the buffalo. Yeah, somebody who attacks with overwhelming strength. Okay, so. You may play a reverse offendente as a counterattack against a mandrillo offendente, because that's how shield how works. Basically, this sword is coming this way, and you strike down with the false edge in the line of a reverse offendente, more or less, or a left over how, more or less. And that allows you to close the line and strike, and their strength pushing down on your sword drives your point through their neck. That's totally good stuff. Um, but that, it requires your opponent to be strong enough for you to be able to play this card because, again, we're modelling what you should do against the buffalo. Scheitelhau. Of all the hidden strikes, this is the one um, which you see the most variation in interpretation from one researcher to another. Um, so, we have basically confined ourselves to exactly what the text says, more or less. <laughs> as best as we can. So you need most prudentia to play it. If your opponent is in Posta Frontale or Crom, you may attack with an under of Fernandin right over how. Okay, that's strictly not how it works in real life. Basically, um, Scheitel how breaks Alba. So somebody has their sword down here and you attack over the top and the, ass the assumption is as they lift their sword to parry, you angulate around it and you strike them either um, straight down the middle or on the top of the head. Again, there's a lot of variation in interpretation out there, and it's perfectly possible that there was a lot of in variation in how this was done actually in period. So like in 15th century sources, it's described a little differently here and there. So, we have modeled all of that um, by saying, if they're in frontale, you can angulate around it, um, striking with a mandrel fenente. When normally, of course, from Tale being here, the line of the Mandarin Fernandez is closed, so in our game you can't attack with the Mandarin Fernandez. This allows you to break that rule. So, those are the cards of the expansion pack. And our intention with this is not to, to create the definitive um, Lichtenauer research resource, of course not. What we've tried to do is, is faithfully represent our current understanding of the Lichtenauer system within the context of this card game. And as an expansion pack, its intention is uh, as if Galeazzo de Mantua, you know, wandering around northern Italy, goes to Germany and takes a month of training or so from Lichtenauer himself, which is possible because they were contemporaries, um, and you know, comes back and has all these cool tricks that he can, he can start whacking people with in, back in Italy. Um, if it's combined with the patron deck, you get perhaps the best German experience, So, uh, because there's, there's some stuff in the patron deck that is not in the Lichtenauer expansion and vice versa. So for the full German experience, you need uh, the patron deck and the Lichtenauer expansion pack, but just the Lichtenauer expansion pack by itself. Basically, it, it models what I would do if a group of my students said, Guy, can you do us a German longsword seminar? And so I have a, a group of theorists and I want to give them the overview of the system, what to do and how to counter it. This is pretty much what I will cover. So uh, I hope you find it fun, useful, entertaining, engaging, and all sorts of other things. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Do find us online at audaciagame.com um, or foot along to my blog where I talk about these things in various places. Um, Guy Windsor dot net slash blog. See you there.